it's time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. Because without you, it would be a weird studio. Nothing to see. You've heard that expression, nothing to see here? I have. I okay. have. You heard it right now. That's but they're going to have a lot to see today. We have a great oh. guest with us. I mean, so much information. In the 9-11 prophecy took him years mm -hmm. to put this together. And I, I started reading it, and, and I was running in, into the weekend, so I took it home with me, and yeah. wow. I mean, well, you are going to love this interview. Really, you are. And the gentleman's name is James Fitzgerald. He's an award-winning producer, entrepreneur, and writer. He's founded Watchword Productions to produce the Bible on video as a way to increase biblical literacy to help spark revival. Wow. And it's all kinds of information about this, but we're going to let him tell us. We're going to we're going to talk about how this book and the inspiration of this book mm -hmm. dovetails with 9/11. It is an amazing. Uh, way the Lord uses individuals in the right place, at the right time, mm -hmm. in the right moment. I love that. And here's our guest right here. Right here. <laughs> We're going to join him. Good to have you. <laughs> Great to be here with you. Hey, what Hello. How are you? Great writing. Keep it up. You have a gift. Thank you. Isn't it, isn't it nice to be able to uh, exercise the gifts that God gives it us. It is, really. And to know that someday on the new heaven and new earth, which I believe is right here, yes. uh, we're going to serve Him. Absolutely. And to wake up every day knowing it will never end. Isn't that incredible? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I early in the morning I walk around our front yard and when it's really black and dark and the and the stars are up there sometimes they are yes sir. yeah <laughs> sometimes it's, it's amazing it, sometimes the moon is over here sometimes the moon is over here sometimes it's straight up and i, I i'm out there and i'm going lord <laughs> you know exactly how to put those stars and that Isn't moon that and everything in perfect order and to think that the one that put all that together knows every detail of my body standing Absolutely. in that place out there mm -hmm. talking to him. Absolutely. It's, it is, yes. I mean, only faith could cause you to go, okay, I believe this yeah. because you said it. Yeah. 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 Now, how did, did you, because uh, Harbinger came yes. out, yes. was a bestseller, mm -hmm. uh, and he, of course, describes all of the happenings, and you come with this kind of book and again pick up the same idea it's incredible. and mm -hmm. how God uses both of you and how this book I pray will be a number one bestseller. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful description of how it all happened. Now uh, let's start with, with the production of the book of Revelation and what happened. Uh, how that all transpired and took place because talk about faith. I was just talking about faith when, yes. when we're looking up at the, at the heavens. But you had to have such trust and faith that what God had given you in a, in a project because you can't do anything today without money. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it takes money. And God Especially has television yes, and production. Yes, absolutely. You know. So you know, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you know, when somebody says, "Well, I, I'll give you a million dollars for that production," that's like, "Go, oh, okay, well, I'll give us get us started." <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing, but God has everything under control. Right. If we need billions, He has billions. Yes. Share how all of this went together. Well, the Lord gave me the vision for what we call the Watchword Bible back in the early '90s, and. Uh, and the vision was to create a Bible that people in a media generation would find easy to read. 
that would be compelling and so forth. I came and shared it with the people. I worked at a television ministry. I was a vice president at that point, and, and I thought they would love this idea, and they, they, they said to me, it's impossible technically to yeah. do what you want, a project as big as the Bible. Um, no one will ever want to read the Bible because I had an idea for a video book. You'd watch it and read it and hear it all at one time. No one will, will want to see something like that on television. Yeah. And, and then you'll never raise the money for a project that big. We did pilots. <laughs> oh, pilots. this is encouraging, isn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Yes, you're right. You know, I was expecting yeah, you know, positive right. feedback. Yeah. But um, did pilots, and, and after about two years, the Lord made it very clear that we needed to give up our jobs. My wife and I both gave up our jobs and decided, and I prayed. I said, God, if this is what you want me to do with the rest of my life, I will commit my, myself to this. So we did. It took, it, well, it took, golly, till 1999 to finish the four Gospels. No one had ever produced all four Gospels before, ever, not even as dramatic reenactments. Mm -hmm. I assumed we would do Revelation last, but the Lord made it very clear in 1999 that was the next book to do. And it would cost tens of thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of dollars to do. We were budgeted to do it for about three months. It took us 10 months. The composer actually was from Tampa. There was a huge connection here. My. He wrote the music. It took him 10 months, 22 original compositions. Now he wrote the music for this? Yes, for the book of Revelation. Every single chapter has original music written to underscore the wow. production. Amazing. And it took seven months just to render the scene. Some of the scenes had a hundred layers of video in one shot. Each layer with multiple special now effects. Now you have to you have to edit this. Yes, we edited it. We put the whole thing together. So you have to sit there. Wow. And create it. Visually and, create it. Absolutely. It was it was unbelievably challenging. There were times I did not think I might even live physically through the process because it was so difficult. Wow. Raising the money to do it, doing the production, leading the people and all of that. Okay, how do you sleep at night? Because when you lay your head down on that pillow, <laughs> if, if you're a mind like most I people did have not your ability. I sleep well. Yeah. I lost, when we started this You're already project, doing the scenes. Before, I really yeah. lost the ability to sleep well for years. Wow. But um, when the project was done, we got it done, and it was in the year 2000, the distributor and the duplicator said, you know, this is so impressive. You need to enter this in film festivals. We did, and it was accepted in okay. one festival. Uh, you said that real quick. Where's the fin film festival? New York City, okay, Madison Square Garden. Okay, this, wow. this is the, we're getting into the book, but this is phenomenal. This I is, mean, did you know that location would be? Uh, I had no idea. No idea. No idea. We were when when it got accepted at the film festival. We were so excited because this is going to be our opportunity. Now tell them how you how you because I I love the uh, the theatrical part of getting known at that film festival. The guy was dressed up like who? Well, he was dressed up like John the Baptist, you know, and he marched around with a sign saying, saying, you know, the end of the world is at hand, you know, repent and, wow. and, and turn to God. Until he did it so much. Now this was July 2000, July right? July 2000, this was 14 Just months before 9-11. Okay. And, and the people finally said, can you stop him Tell from him saying quiet. that? Yes. Before wow. we went, the week before we went, and this is the key, I was reviewing the master tape just to make sure there are no problems. We're going to show it in the media capital of the world. You know, we're so sure. excited. This yeah. is our big opportunity. And I get to chapter 18, and a verse absolutely jumped out at me. This was the greatest city ever. And it's, a ta it's, it's describing the great city of Babylon that's destroyed in the book of Revelation. Yeah. yeah. And... It struck me because we're going to the Big Apple, you yes. know, the media capital of the yes. world. Surely a city that considers itself to be, if not the greatest, one of the greatest cities ever. And there's a Babylon similarity. Well, I didn't know that at that point. But my, my next thought was a book written in the 80s about the imminent destruction of New York, which I never thought made sense because I thought God would give prior warnings, there would be limited judgments and so forth. But I thought, I'm going to go back upstairs, stop what I'm doing right here, and review chapter 17 and 18. I found nothing in chapter 17, I got to 18, and I was stunned because there are three groups of people that describe Babylon. 
And all three of them, the descriptions fit New York City better than any other city on the planet that I could, that I could see or even foresee could possibly wow. be in 100 years. Now remember, the detail of what we're talking about is here yes. in the book. Yep. So we're just getting yeah. through the, the surface. I spell it all <laughs> yeah. out okay. right there. Yeah. And um, the, the next thing that happens is I'm thinking, well, if God is going to judge Babylon, and New York is such an incredible type of Babylon. And I thought of the sins that New York is, in, is complicit in in our nation today. And I thought, how is he not going to judge New York if he's going to judge Babylon? And so my, I came away thinking, surely it's going to happen. And the way God has made me, I didn't just rest there. My next thought was, well, I wonder if I could foresee when something like that might happen and how it might happen immediately. My next thought is, wow, this is the millennium. This is only the second turning of a millennium since Christ. That can't be incidental in God's providence. And secondly, we're releasing this book at this very city that is most a type of Babylon. And we're doing it at the millennium. And you were invited to that festival. We're invited. And, 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 and I then remembered it's at Madison Square Garden, right smack dab in the center of the city. And I thought of the story of Jonah because Jonah talks about how Nineveh is a three days journey. Yes. He goes for a day. So he goes into the center of the city. I, I always remember that detail and I thought, my goodness, God, it seems to me that you're saying that this is going to be an imminent judgment. Do you, do you want us when we're in New York to be on the streets, you know, Saying something like that, I thought that would be totally ridiculous. Nobody but what is amazing is that in your mind, yeah. and in anybody's mind, well, that wouldn't just happen unless the place was bombed or something would, some yeah. country would try to take us. I mean, you're, 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 you're thinking of all of these things that it could not be just like a place all of a sudden one place at yes. one time with tremendous destruction and any one of us would think that way. Yeah. Well I expel it all out in there how he in the book how he led me to think no um, I don't want you out on a street corner. I've sent you there with the book of Revelation the greatest book of prophecy about the end of yeah. the world that there is. Now keeping in mind 9-11 hadn't happened. Yes. So you're there just like any one of us would be there just sightseeing. Right. But you're there for a specific reason. There for a specific reason and feel like God has been, has just shown me that I've opened this door for you for a purpose because I'm going to speak to this city through a still small voice through my word. And I thought nobody's going to pay attention. We're there. And at that point I was convinced that it must be determined because it wouldn't be like Nineveh, that people would repent. And then I thought, well, if it's going to reflect the events of chapter 18, you know, in the process of the book, I describe how the only thing I could think of that would fit that would be a surprise attack in a single hour because all three of those groups of people say, in a single hour, her judgment has come. Mm -hmm. So I then went to the staff, I sat them down, I decided, you know, I can't keep this to myself. They're going to think I'm crazy, but I have to go down and share this with you saying, you know, I explained the whole thing. So how are they, how are they responding? They sat there and they listened to me and they basically accepted everything that I said and, and, and themselves believed, having worked on Revelation for 10 months, the soberness of that message about the end of the world and God's wrath upon a world that will not listen to him or pay attention to him. And so I just shared that I, I, all I can think of is that when we go there, that we can pray for mercy, that in the midst of judgment, God would remember mercy because I believe he's sending us there to warn of a judgment, a surprise attack that will hit the city within a span of time, I define that in the book, that would reflect chapter 18 of the book of Revelation. And of course, that's what happened 14 wow. months later. Now, how are your films accepted? The, the, at the festival, how, how is how, well? How at does the that festival, work? The, the, they just they just you know look at submissions. It's one of many. They, yeah, it's one of many, and 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 frankly, ours was the only one that was of that nature. It's a secular film festival. 
I had a hard time. Which was even, supernatural. You, you were invited. Absolutely, it was. Absolutely, it was so clear to me. And most of the others are, as you can imagine, independent filmmakers. You know, pornographic, sure. uh, evil, Everything vicious. Is, yeah. You know, and I'm having a hard time. And this guy marching around. And he's marching around yeah. with that. And um, it was such a, a heaviness on our shoulders. It was just a feeling of dread of what would come. So, but now nothing let's, else. Let's, let's fast forward using yeah. film. Fast yeah. forward. Nothing well, else happened. Okay, nothing else happened. Now, now, where are you from? That film festival, where do you go next? I will interject this. We left the festival, we came home, and in our mailbox was a letter from my wife's family saying that her mother had just finished their 300-page family history about their ancestors after 40 years' work. Did we want a copy? We ordered it, came, put it on a bookshelf, but we, one of the highlights of that book in the letter was that her family had owned property at the founding of New York City near Wall Street. So we didn't pay any attention to it. When 9-11 happened, the night before it happened, actually, I need to say this. We started this project full time in 1993. I went to New York City to get the rights. That's where we got the rights, the American Bible Society. We got the rights the week before the first World Trade Center attack, if you remember that, yes. 93. Yeah. We finished it the week before 9-11. All those years of work, Goodness. it was like bookends. And actually the last scene rendered on, on the 20th anniversary of my wife's and, and, and my marriage, and I took that as such a sign that God had brought us together for his purpose. We'd been able to do this work. And the staff went on vacation. Um, the editor who'd carried that sign at the film festival um, went to uh, the shore. We had shot some of the scenes for Revelation during the hurricane there. They wanted to show some of their friends. They planned to show it the last day of their week's vacation because we were done with our production part of it. So they used that video from a tragedy. Yeah, and yeah. that was in the production, and yeah. he just wanted to show his friends. The day, the last day of their vacation, they planned to show that was September 11th, 2001. They get up in the morning, they turn on the television, and of course they see what everybody else is mm -hmm. seeing. And Scott, the editor, looks at the TV and said, oh my goodness, this is chapter 18. Goodness. Now and you were in your home upstairs. I was in my home. We were on vacation yeah. at that point. Yeah. And my wife calls up to me and says, you know, there's been an attack. Oh, no, not attack. She said there's been a plane crash yeah. into the World Trade Center. So you didn't really... No big deal. That's no, possible. No big deal. I said, yeah. that's impossible. Yeah. I looked out the window. It's a yeah. blue sky, yeah. you know. But I turn on the television. Sure enough, there are the two tall towers, smoke trailing from one of them. And I think, how in the world did a pilot ever hit that building with this clear sky? And as I'm standing there watching this, within minutes, the second plane hit. Yeah. And at that point, I absolutely knew this was a terrorist attack. So there's and, the answer that... Well, it wasn't yet to yeah. me. Okay. I was just furious yeah. that our government had allowed it to happen, that the air, mm -hmm. airlines had mm -hmm. allowed it to happen. And um, so we're watching this, and then the plane crashes near Pittsburgh. And I get a call from the musician in Tampa who says to me, I'm just calling to see if you're okay. You're near Pittsburgh. I heard a plane, plane crash there. And, and I said, we're perfectly fine. I'm just upset. And he said to me, do you remember we were in New York just a year ago? And I had stood at the foot of the Empire State Building and told him everything that I've said to you here. And, and it was just like, you know, he was listening to me pleasantly, but, you know, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Wow. And at that point, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is it. Mm -hmm. Because it had started slowly, but once the towers yeah. came down, you, you were devastated. Yeah, that's right. You know. And, and I, mean, I mean, you talk about... Revelation 18, I just wrote down from your book, Babylon has fallen. Yes. I mean, did, did you reflect on that? I had told the staff that I believed that there would be attack in a single hour, that tall buildings would fall, that many people would be killed, and there would be fire and smoke visible from as far out on the sea that you could see it, because that's what you get 
That's what is described in chapter 18 of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Well, after that, you know, just looking at the events and looking at chapter 18, I devote a whole chapter to it. There's 12 or 13 specific, concrete, incredible uh, elements that are chapter 18 tied to 9-11. And I started to make notes on those things. You know, I'm a writer. I just, I thought, God, I, I, I have to begin to write these things. And as I, in my first notes, I started to do that. Then I said to my wife, I said, by the way, your family owned property near, the wor near Wall Street at the founding. Would you go get your book, open it for the first time, find out where that was? As it turned out, my wife's family owned the World Trade Center property and the Ground Zero property and the land where the chapel in the Harbinger is for nearly a century at the founding of New York City. Wow. What was, what was their names? Die. And the street, they Dye? were Dutch. They okay. were, it was the Dye family, D-E-Y. Dye Street is still there. The Trade Center covered half of Dye Street. They obliterated that street, but the other half is still there. At that point, I thought, God, I know that you sent us there with your warning. Not only was this a reflection of Chapter 18, but with this event, with, with this tie-in, to my wife's family. Not only did you show me what would happen when it took place, ground zero, the place where it happened, tied into her families. What are the, uh, there, there are no way there are odds for that. And, and yet God put that in your spirit. Absolutely. To do what you've done in this book. Absolutely. He then gave alter, other confirmations through there that then made it clear to me that he wanted me to tell this story and then he wouldn't let me do it for six years because we were so tied up in all that we were doing. And it was in that process of time that, that the bigger picture of 9-11 became clear. And that's what I believe God's whole purpose in the warning was. Because New York was not going to heed what we were saying. Mm -hmm. But it's that I would know that I know that I know that 9-11 was God's judgment on America yeah. for sin. Not a surmise, not an opinion, yeah. not a guess. I know it for a fact. That's when, when the and Harbinger... you don't have to apologize for that I don't. statement. No, I don't. Which many people made a statement, if you remember, yes. and then they had to go back. They had to go back and apologize. Yeah. And, and frankly, God, I, I devote a chapter to how he continued to speak to me through his word because you needed so much confirmation because this was such a heavy message in a nation that was saying, God bless America, but wanting him to bless America without the repentance Yes. that we needed as yes, a nation yes, yes, yes. to carry out. I, I, I love, uh, I I've got so many notes here, and, and you know what? The Spirit of God just took over, and this guy is doing exactly what I prayed for. Praise God. I mean, it is, it's just amazing how he works. But reading Lamentations, he says, Then praying one hour, I beg God, have mercy on us. The next morning, Betty called me, and that's when the plane had hit. That's when the plane but it, hit. But I mean, you had spent an hour yes. praying. The night before. And, and you said yeah. in the book that this was not common to me. No, no. I, I would pray all the time for the country, but not get on my knees yeah, specifically for an, for an hour. hour. Because Lamentations is the, is the book after Jeremiah that talks about his broken heart over the destruction it's of the people. It's a small book. I went back and read it because of your book. Did you? Yes. Well, well I always actually approach it with some sort of trepidation yeah. because of the heaviness of that message. Yeah. If you're not really obedient to God, you know, what, what does that yeah. bring to your life? But I read it that night and I couldn't stop because I had such a burden for where our country was yes. and I could not imagine how much longer God can you put up with us without doing something. Now you talk, where is America in prophecy? Well, that is incredible because I devote, a, I devote an entire chapter. You do to that. And there's more than one chapter, frankly. Many people believe that America is not in the New Testament in Bible prophecy. I spell out at specifically two places where I am absolutely convinced and give the proof yeah. that 9-11 is. And, and, and I can't really explain that in great detail here, but I will try to say this much about it. America has been used by God to send 
and to support missions, unlike any nation in the history of the world. Yep. As I spell out in the book, from the time of Christ to the founding of America, it took 18 centuries for the world's population to reach one billion people. Yeah. From the founding of America to today, our population in a little over 200 years grew from one billion to seven billion. During that time, God had used this nation in a profound way wow. to spread the gospel to the world. Many Christians know that. What they don't realize is that he used us in another role as well. Because of our prosperity and our power and spreading across the nation, becoming the power that we are, he used America to check evil in the modern world so that the Great Commission could be carried out in a more peaceful world through history. That is a tremendous role that God has given this nation. And because we're rejecting God, just like Israel, when Balaam mm -hmm. tried to, oh, yeah. you know, curse Israel, you know, I'm not saying America is Israel, but a, there's a pattern there. Yeah. He couldn't. But America, but Balaam was able ultimately to get the Israelites tempted to sin against God so God would bring judgment. And it's amazing in your book, you talk about mm -hmm. the tower, tower of Babel. Yes. And how, in, in Genesis 11, the Twin Towers. Twin Towers. Filled with many different languages. Just There's a Babel in right. the Towers. Right. I mean, it's, it's, there, there are so many, ta and you gotta and, get and, your book to, uh, you, you'll be just like me, you, you, you have to take it wherever you're going because you gotta keep reading it. But, <laughs> the World Trade Center, yeah. you know, so it speaks to the whole world. Yes. That's right. They were called towers, like the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 18 it says, God says, because Babylon's sins are so great, let her judgment be double. Not one tall tower. Yeah. The architects built two, two identical towers so that the impression of its of its mighty economic power mm -hmm. would be so great. Yeah, boy, I tell you, it is. Um, I am That's so amazing. thrilled that every answer that you may have is right here. And God bless you. Thank you. That can take the Word of God, put it down on pages so that, and, and what I love is I can read your Word, this is the way I do, and then the Scripture references in there, then I go right to them, and I start reading them, and then I look back and I go, wow. Tons of Scripture yes. references. Yes, yeah. and that's what you want, is an author that uses the Word of God, not uses his opinion, or some dream, or whatever, 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 yes. but make sure that it's scripturally based because let me tell you something, Jesus Christ yeah. is the answer to every need you may have. God bless you, bye-bye.